Certain key edits were ignored, including our request to add a condemnation of Hamas. And we did not agree with everything in the resolution. We believe it was important for the council to speak out and make clear that our ceasefire must, any ceasefire, must come with the release of all hostages. So this is a major row between Washington and Jerusalem. We're going to watch how this goes. There was no veto, but Israel was asking the U.S. to go ahead and veto this yesterday. The U.S. abstained on the U.N. Security Council calling for a ceasefire regarding Gaza. This is the first time it failed to protect Israel at the world body since the war began. All this coming now while Hamas rejects the latest hostage deal on the table and former Israeli ambassador to the U.S., Ron Dermer, a member of Israel's war cabinet, with me now. And, sir, thank you for your time. How deep and how big is, you, is the disagreement between your government, the people of Israel, and the Biden administration? Well, we were obviously disappointed with the decision, as you mentioned, of the United States to not veto this resolution. And the reason why we were disappointed uh, is that for the last uh, five, almost six months now, the U.S. has had a principal position to not delink the issue of a ceasefire from the release of the hostages. And I appreciate the fact that since the resolution was passed, that U.S. officials have come out and say our policy hasn't changed. The problem is the resolution doesn't say what, the same thing. What the resolution says is it says there should be a ceasefire. And also, you should have the release of hostages. There's just no linkage between the two. And that linkage was there as late as five days ago, when the U.S. put forward a proposal that was actually... Uh, vetoed by the Russians and the Chinese because they want to delink these two things. So here's bottom line for the, your viewers, Bill. Iran and Hamas have welcomed this U.N. Security Council decision. I guarantee you that any Security Council decision welcomed by Iran and Hamas is not good for the state of Israel and it's not good for the United States of America. I want to play a soundbite from over the weekend. Vice President Kamala Harris on the consequences if indeed the IDF goes into that southern Gazan town called Rafa. We're looking at about a million and a half people in Rafa who are there because they were told to go there, most of them. And so we've been very clear that um, it would be a mistake to move into Rafa with any type of military operation. Are you ruling out that there would be consequences from the United States? I am ruling out nothing. It's on that last comment, I'm ruling out nothing. That's not normally how the U.S. government talks about Israel. What does that say to you? Well, I, under, I understand that's the, the, uh, the, the position of the vice president uh, and the U.S. administration when it comes to a major military operation in Rafah. But when it comes to consequences, Bill, let me tell you the consequences of us not going into Rafah and not getting rid of these four remaining battalions of Hamas. Essentially, we have dismantled the terrorist army of Hamas. We've got five battalions left. Four of them are in Rafah. They have somewhere maybe seven, 8,000 terrorists there. We cannot afford to not go into Rafah and finish the job because then what they'll do is October 7th again and again and again. So th there's no chance that Israel is not going to go and finish the job in Rafah. Now, I was supposed to be in the United States today in Washington to discuss the proposals that the U.S. administration has. They were going to suggest us ways where we don't have to do it with a major military operation. Now, I don't see that it's possible to do it. Of course, we were open to listening to them, but the, the mistake was that yesterday when they decided not to veto that resolution, they sent a terrible message to Hamas that you can get a ceasefire without, uh, without uh, giving up the hostages, without making a hostage deal. And I think the combination of that message that was sent to the UN Security Council and Israel going to discuss how we're not going to do a major military operation uh, in Rafah would have sent the exact wrong message to Hamas. That's why the prime minister made the right decision to not send the delegation. Uh, and I hope we can put uh, the U.S.-Israel relationship back on track, because for five months, for over five months, the U.S. has backed Israel, and we're going right. to win this yep. war. Uh, and so I think sir, it's let me, important let, let me to, win it, to win it with the United States. I got it. President Biden has had your back almost for his entire political career. Do you believe he still does today? I think in his heart he does, and I appreciate very much when uh, this war started, he came out of the gate with a very clear statement that made a difference between right and wrong, good and evil. He called uh, Hamas worse than ISIS. He said they were sheer evil, and, and Hamas hasn't changed. And you can't leave part of sheer evil in place. you got to finish the job, and I hope 
as we move forward to victory, that the United States will continue to stand by our side. Because, Bill, we have no choice. We are not going to allow this army of terrorism, this army of terror, Hamas, to survive in Gaza. We're going to take them out. And we're very close to victory. And once we start in Rafah, as the prime minister said, we will be weeks away from finishing the major military operations of this war. And remind you, I don't know if you uh, uh, and Dana have covered it now. We are now operating in the northern part of Gaza in Shifa Hospital. And that's after we did major military operations where we did armored divisions that went there and we gave warnings ahead of time. When we went back there just a few days ago, we went with a commando force. And you know what happened with that force? We have uh, killed 170 terrorists. We have captured over 800 terrorists. Uh, we have not had a single civilian casualty. And unfortunately, we lost two uh, Israeli soldiers in that operation. That shows you the precision that Israel takes. But that can only happen after you finish the major military operations. Okay. After you've dismantled the battalions in the north, then you can go in with a smaller operation. That's why we have to finish Rafah. Once we finish Rafah, the heavy phase of this war will be behind us, and the terror army of Hamas will be dismantled. And then we can start talking about what happens the day after. How do we get to a different future there, there for Israelis many, and Palestinians many, many, alike? Many, many questions that remain, sir. Th thank you for your time. Exactly. I I'm out of time right now, but uh, Mr. Ambassador Ron Dermer, thank you. Live in Jerusalem. We'll see when that trip is rescheduled to Washington. Because right now, there is nothing on the books. Thank you, sir, for coming on today. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.